Sometimes I wonder how I got into the food industry. It's a far cry from schoolgirl aspirations when I thought I might be something like an exotic musician or something. I was going to be a journalist even. But somehow or another, cooking seemed to be my destiny. I grew up in a home where my mother was an excellent cook. We had an ama who did wonderful food for the family and I just took it for granted. To tell the truth, I hadn't cooked a Chinese meal until after I was married. And um, then I found that people all over the place were asking me to show them how to do things. So for you know, charity drives and so forth, I was doing these little cooking demonstrations and talks. And I could see how Australian people really loved Chinese food, but they, had, they were abysmally ignorant of the real Chinese food. And do you know that upset me? It shouldn't have, but it did. And I thought, they don't think Chinese food is really, really beautiful. They just like it. They seem to think it was inferior to French cuisine, say, and I knew differently. And so I kind of became a missionary without even knowing about it, because every time I went out, I was kind of extolling the virtues of Chinese food and Chinese culture. And it wasn't long before those little demonstrations became classes, because People came to me and said, Elizabeth, we're very serious. We want to really learn. And so I opened up a class and 10 people came. I had 10 students and I thought that would be the end of it. That was in 1961. But like Topsy, it just grew and grew and grew. And then I had a waiting list and all of a sudden I was in business. <laughs> and my cooking classes just went from strength to strength. And today from 10 at the start, I have taught about 37,000 people in Victoria and I find that very satisfying because I was trained as a school teacher when I was young and I think my love of teaching combined with the love of my own native cuisine, it was a, a natural combination. With all due respect I think to my forebears who brought Chinese food into Australia as far back as the gold rush days, I think that they were very courageous people and they really began it all. I feel that my contribution has been to lift the cuisine that was introduced at that time, mainly because they had to survive, they cooked just for survival. I've lifted to the level, I've lifted it to the level in which I believe Chinese cuisine should occupy. It should be a global cuisine worthy of the greatest respect. And I think now that has been my contribution so that most Australian people now, perhaps mostly through my my work, my work, my books, my talks, see Chinese food as something more than just something cheap to fill their stomachs. They see it as a fine cuisine, and I'd like to take a little bit of credit and say that that was my contribution. <laughs>